Hello everyone. I want you to imagine for a moment being in a happy place in nature. Perhaps you're sitting amidst a forest within woods of grain and chirping birds, critters bouncing through the bushes and swinging through the trees. Or perhaps you're scuba diving underwater, spotting the splendid color of the coral reefs and the fish smoothly passing by. Wherever you are, the area is so full of its own quirks that function in such a compatible way and creatures that enrich the experience of where you are. Now imagine those creatures aren't there anymore. Diversity is important for creating a more interesting and compatible world, but the way things are going, the diversity in the animal kingdom will decrease. Today we're learning about some of the animals in the world around us, animals that might not soon be in the world around us much longer. We'll start off with the critically endangered orangutan. Although they have 97% of their DNA in common with humans, these creatures are much worse off, likely to be extinct within the next decade. They tend to be largely involved with spreading seeds through forests, keeping their tropical environments flourishing. But when illegal logging in protected areas pushes them out to unprotected areas, their environment often further becomes in the hands of deforestation from companies looking to use that space. This leads to orangutans searching for food in agricultural areas outside their forests, which brings up the hunting problem. These creatures being slow and large are easy targets. So if a person wanted to kill them for food or because the orangutan took some of the person's crops, it's a simple task to take them down. Young orangutans are often traded as pets, but a lot of times they'll die during transportation. And considering orangutans can only give birth once every few years, it makes it difficult for the population to come back if they're frequently hunted. So, the big question, how do we stop these creatures from becoming extinct? You can donate money to programs designed to protect specifically orangutans such as the Orangutan Foundation, or adopt an orangutan through World Wildlife. You can also donate to programs that stop deforestation, such as the Rainforest Action Network or Greenpeace. If you're not able to donate much like my college student self, or you'd prefer a more passive way of helping stop deforestation, you can use Ecosia as your search engine, which results in a planted tree for every 45 searches you make. So consider how you can help out so orangutans don't become extinct in the next 10 years. Let's head for the desert and grassland so we can talk about the critically endangered black rhino. In the past 60 years, black rhinos have been seriously hunted to the point where there were less than 2,500 of them remaining. Since the turn of the century, rhinos have increased their numbers to about 5,500. It would be a shame if they were to deplete from existence, considering they're one of the oldest groups of mammals, and protecting their lands helps conserve other species around them. In an economical aspect, black rhinos also contribute a lot of tourist income for some less developed countries. But another economical aspect has been killing them off. There's a high demand for illegal rhino horn trading, and with occasional political instability taking attention off of rhino conservation, this only becomes worse. Losing their habitats and having too many of them in the same area can also increase inbreeding or disease transmission. So what can we do? Well, to start, don't buy illegal wildlife products, since that just encourages poaching. Next, you can sign a pledge to help stop wildlife crime at World Wildlife, the same website you can symbolically adopt a black rhino. Or if you feel like making it a community experience, try attending or organizing a Bowling for Rhinos fundraiser at your local bowling alley. You've heard of Save the Sea Turtles, correct? Let's talk about the critically endangered Hawksbill Sea Turtle. They help maintain coral reefs by removing sponges, which makes it easier for reef fish to feed. The shells with overlapping colorful scales are pretty, but the cost of this beauty is that there's a lot of illegal trade in these shells. The turtles are also often accidentally caught in nets and fishing hooks, which results in them drowning if they can't reach the sea surface to breathe. Marine debris is also a serious issue, since almost all turtles ingest plastic at some point in their lives, often thinking something like a plastic bag looks like a jellyfish they can eat. Since sea turtles can't regurgitate the plastic, it'll stay in their stomach and stop them from swallowing food, resulting in severe health problems or starving to death. In addition, climate change is messing with the coral reef environments where these sea turtles feed, and beach erosion is causing nesting to become more difficult. With plastic in the ocean, fading coral reefs, and less areas to nest, the homes of these sea turtles are becoming destroyed. Ways of helping stop this include signing your name to fighting plastic pollution in oceans, using turtle-friendly circle-shaped hooks and fishing, and don't buy anything made of turtle shells. In addition, don't release balloons into the sky, since when balloons come back down, they could end up in the ocean and in a turtle's stomach. Cleaning litter off beaches and making sure to pick up after yourself at the beach is important for the same reason. And if you happen to find yourself at the beach at night, don't have on any bright lights, since it could distract turtle hatchlings when they're trying to use the light reflected off the sea to get them to the safety of water. You can also use search engines where the more searches you make, the more plastic the search engine organization cleans out the ocean. Leaping back onto land, let's describe the critically endangered Amur leopard. 
This leopard doesn't dwell in the African savannas, but instead forests and mountains in the far east of Russia. Conserving the habitat of the armor leopards helps balance out the populations of other species that dwell there. Unfortunately, the main threat to these species is, unsurprisingly, people. Amur leopards not only face being illegally poached, but their prey is often hunted to the point where they can't recover their population. I want you to imagine the amount of people who you see every day, or perhaps the amount of people you'd see walking around your nearest city. Imagine the people passing by you on the street, going about their everyday business. So many people, maybe to the point where you might never see them again, or get to know them. You wouldn't need to. It's not like the human race is composed of 84 individuals. Like the Amur leopards. 84 might actually be on the high end of estimating how many are still left in the wild as of now. There were only about 20 of them left at the turn of the century, but with the help of conservation efforts, they've started to come back. Honestly, that gives me some hope. Even though there's so few of them, it's possible they could recover their population further. Really imagine how strange it would be with 84 humans left, only 83 other people to decide if you want to be partners with them or unite with them to survive. That's what these leopards are facing. So perhaps we can take some time to donate to groups like Traffic and the WWF to stop poaching and sign pledges to stop wildlife crime. Since we just described one of the rarest land mammals, let's finish with the absolute rarest marine mammal, the Vaquita porpoise. I want you to take a moment to suppose how many of these are still in the wild. The answer is 10. You might be able to find them in the northern part of the Gulf of California, but due to illegal totoba trading, Vaquitas are caught in unsafe nets and drown frequently to where they could be eliminated in the next few years. To stop that, clearing the ocean of lost or abandoned nets, known as ghost nets, is important to keep wildlife such as the vaquitas from getting caught on accident. It's important to stop illegal poaching of all animals, but stopping illegal poaching of marine animals in particular will limit accidental deaths from entanglement. So with all this in mind, I hope you appreciate the environment around you and consider how you can help the other species you share it with. Diversity makes the world strong, so let's prevent more animals from becoming extinct and keep the world resilient. Thank you for taking some time to introduce some ecology into your life, and feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to introduce some more science, art, and math concepts into your life. And feel free to check out my website, Steam for Sam. See you next time.